Hello, the, the title of this uh, keynote is Timber Frame Walls Under Fire Condition. This is a work developed by myself, Paulo Piloto, from the Polytechnic Institute of Bragança, Portugal, and my colleague Elsa Fonseca from the Polytechnic Institute of Porto, uh, also Portugal. So the presentation is going to be divided in four points. Uh, so I will start with a short introduction to timber frame walls and uh, do some presentations regarding to the standards used for design and standards used for testing. And then we move to uh, materials and methods where I sh shall present the finite element method or, and, and model that uh, we decided to use to use for, for this analysis. And then we move to a parametric study and finally I will present some conclusions. So the major events of the temperature uh, in, uh, in the wood member are uh, at 100 degrees Celsius we are expecting some free water evaporation. At 300 and with the existence of a flame uh, we might expect the ignition. And after 300 there is the development of the sharing layer due to the pyrolysis effect. And this uh, shared material is six times more insulent when compared to the original wood material. Regarding the design basic principles, we should take care about the ultimate limit state. So this, there is a similar design process to room temperature, but with reduction of the cross section. We will talk about this in the next slides. And regarding to the service serviceability limit state, uh, it should not be considered um, because the requirements um, are less uh, restrictive. Um, the thermal expansion of the wood uh, shall be neglected as well, but the thermal effects of or thermal expansion of other materials other than timber should be considered. Uh, for instance, if you mix uh, if you make a mix of uh, steel and uh, and wood, of course, uh, for the steel material, you need to include the, um, the, ex the thermal expansion. Regarding to the design effect of the action load, um, we can use the accidental uh, formula using coefficients and the combination, or we can use a simplified formula based on a reduction factor um, multiplied by the design uh, effect of the action load at, uh, at the home temperature. Uh, when, we have, uh, when we are talking about uh, wood materials and timber woods, is always a question of fire safety. And uh, this picture presents to you a comparison between a steel beam and a, um, and a, a wood beam and still failed after 30 minutes, while the timber remains straight uh, during more than 70 minutes. Regarding to the standards uh, used for design, uh, Euro in Europe, uh, um, we need to use Eurocode 5 part 1.2, and we need to take care about material properties and the effect of the temperature, or the temperature effect on the material properties regarding to the to the to the strength of material, we need to use some uh, coefficients uh, that multiply the value of the strength at room temperature. We are talking about the KFI um, uh, and the K mod uh, FI mod FI to take care about the changes between the characteristics value from of the property from five percent to twenty percent and to take care of the temperature and moisture effects on the material uh, regarding to strength and stiffness, of course. The design values for uh, the resistance, when we talk about load bearing capacity, uh, may be uh, determined by the uh, conversion factor, um, eta, that is in this formula, and um, the, 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 the design value. Uh, and the phi may be determined by this multiplication uh, of this uh, conversion factor times the resistance at 20 degrees um, temperature. And finally, to check if the element is able to support load, what we need to do is uh, apply this inequality. It means that uh, the effect of the load should be smaller or equal than the resistance or load-bearing capacity of the element. 
So, uh, as I mentioned before, we need to take care about the this effect of the sharing layer. So there is two options in Neurocode 5.1.2. Uh, 5.1.2 uh, and they are so we can use the reduce cross-section method and um, in this case the material the mechanical properties are not affected by the temperature in the in the region and we talk about uh, the effective uh, um, effective uh, cross-section and there is another method which is reduced properties method which is based on the previous one, but uh, the properties are affected by the temperatures in the residual cross-section area. So there is the effective and the residual cross-section, and we need to uh, and we need to be to to distinguish uh, both. Okay. Regarding to testing, uh, there is a European standard that uh, takes into account. Uh, which, which is the standard that should be used for testing any kind of elements and the the, the standard is the 1363-1 uh, and regarding to the load bearing capacity of, uh, of, load, uh, of vertical elements we need to uh, take into consideration the contraction of the elements and the rate of, uh, of uh, vertical contraction and when uh, one or the other is reached, uh, so the load bearing capacity can be, find, can be found. Uh, regarding to the integrity, so we need to check the flames through the cracks and openings and, or the ignition of a cotton pad. This is another uh, important parameter for, to test the integrity of the, of, the, of the wall in this case. And regarding the insulation criterion, we need to take care about uh, the what is going on on the unexposed uh, surface of the wall and um, we need to check the average temperature above the initial average temperature or the maximum um, temperature above the initial so for the average we need to take care about take care of the 140 degrees above the initial average temperature and for the maximum 180 degrees of incre incre incremental uh, temperature. According to the standards for testing, uh, the 1365 slash 1, uh, there should be a blinch on the top and a bedding plate to distribute the loads because normally the load is applied by hydraulic jacks. And there should be a clearance of 25 to 50 millimeters from the vertical edges of the test specimen, um, that, that, and this uh, and this gap should be filled with uh, uh, ceramic fiber. Normally, is the this white material that we are seeing in this picture, and the specimen shall be uh, tested as uh, it is intended to be in use. So both ends may be uh, inched or fixed, depends on the way you uh, decide to uh, build these uh, the walls <clears throat> this standard uh, also uh, tells you uh, what are the consequences consequential effects of uh, failing of certain performance criteria so if there is um, an insulation or an or, and an integrity uh, what happens uh, a failure for insulation what happens regarding to the load bearing or what happens if the load bearing uh, is the first one to be achieved so so the performance criteria for insulation in the degree shall automatically be assumed not to be satisfied when the load bearing criteria uh, ceases to be satisfied and uh, we also need to maybe take care of the insulation versus integrity so when there is a, um, a failure of integrity then uh, there is no uh, it is assumed to be uh, also uh, a, a failure for insulation according to the uh, to the research fire safety research and guidance project from the this uh, structural timber association um, um, the level of the load to apply during the fire test 
should be in between 60 or 80 percent of the load level uh, typically for two-story house walls such as those ones that you are seeing even for internal walls or external walls so the next slide uh, regards to materials and methods uh, in this case we are going to analyze two specimens um, we are using a timber frame uh, made by softwood and the tracks and the studs are made with a cross section of 100 millimeters uh, times 50 millimeters uh, regarding the fire events we are going to assume that there is a fire in one of the of the surfaces of this wall so it is expected that on the opposite um, face there is uh, there is no fire so there is only one fire from one side and um, of course due to the fact that this uh, timber frame is going to be protected by gypsum plates we expect th that those gypsum plates are going to fall off and uh, they are going to crack during the test and due to this experimental observation uh, we need to take care about the temperatures that they are going to uh, be inside the cavity region so the cavity is the space that is not filled in between studs and between the plates of the gypsum layer and for that reason that's why we have some uh, uh, special curves that are called the, the, the temperature that are recording the temperature evolution inside the cavity and they are very important to make the validation of the numerical model so regarding to uh, the specimen number one we are going to use uh, fire cavity one um, uh, inside the cavity region and regarding to specimen two we are going to use a fire cavity curve um, number two inside the cavity region so we are talking about those uh, uh, curves that are represented on the graph so the blue one is the standard fire iso the red one is the, the, the temperature for the cavity of the specimen one and the green one the green curve is the uh, temperature for the cavity region of the uh, specimen number two first of all we need to um, be able to solve the second order differential equation for um, energy and uh, of course this uh, this uh, second order differential equation is uh, submitted to uh, non-linear boundary conditions and also uh, this uh, second order differential equation is based on uh, certain uh, material properties thermal material properties that are temperature dependent and for that reason the process is uh, iterative and of course because it is an, an unsteady state so we need to take care of the time and the step and the time step that we need to uh, get the solution so uh, on the surface that is exposed to fire we need to consider the convection and radiation effects and uh, on the surface that is not exposed to fire uh, we may only consider the convection effect uh, or the convection uh, heat flow but considering uh, coefficient equal to nine to take care uh, or according to the standard uh, to standard uh, euro code one part 1.2 this means that uh, we are taking care of the, of the radiation effect as well on the unexposed surface of course we need to modify the second uh, order differential equation into an algebraic um, equation and here we have the, the the algebraic equation and tt will be considered as a vector for the temperature on the nodes that we are going to use in the finite element method so the mesh is going to be made using uh, solid finite elements with eight nodes and one degree of freedom which is the temperature uh, th this this kind of elements uses linear interpolating functions and we are going to use full integration uh, gauss method two times two times two points and of course the solution method uh, as i as i said before is is going to be incremental and iterative and the time step was defined to be 60 seconds but with the possibility to be reduced to one second 
The convergence criterion is based on heat flow with a tolerance of 1% and a reference value of uh, uh, 10, point, 10 power minus 6. The boundary conditions on the exposed side we have already mentioned, the convection and radiation, and with all the coefficients that are in this slide, and for the unexposed as well. And, of course, for the cavity, this is a kind of um, a new proposal because it takes into account uh, the degradation effects of the material, in this case gypsum, which is the pink material that we have in this picture. And for that reason, we we decided to use a, an average uh, co 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 convection coefficient, so an average value between 25 and 9. So it, we are talking about 17. And uh, this can be justified by the fact that at the beginning there is no fire inside the cavity, but at the end there is, of course, no uh, gypsum plates on the uh, exposed side. So. This means that during the test, we are expecting uh, that the convection coefficient is going to rise uh, from uh, a, very a very small number to uh, very big. Uh, and this very big that we are taking into account is 25 watt per square meter Kelvin. So here we have the, the, preliminary, the, prim, the, the first results from uh, the analysis where we are talking about the thermal analysis and we have two uh, interesting pictures or GIF animation that uh, represents the temperature evolution on, on the timber frame and as well on the, on the gypsum plates. And those, th those temperatures are going to be important for the load bearing analysis that we are going to do. And, um, but of course we can take care about the insulation uh, criterion right now. So if we track the temperature on the unexposed surface, we can uh, determine the max and the average temperature. So for specimen one, uh, the first um, graph on the right si on the left side. So we are expecting to have a failure uh, in 44 uh, or 46. Uh, so 44 is the uh, the time determined for the Tmax and 46 for the average temperature. And for the specimen 2, we are talking about 91 minutes. Uh, we determined the same value for the maximum and average temperature. So, uh, by the way, the those uh, average and Tmax were determined at uh, an average high high of the um, of the specimen so we are talking about uh, at z, z coordinate equal to 0 0.5 meter and we took all the node numbers or the node values to determine the average and the maximum temperatures so we are just right now seeing the results for 30 after 30 minutes and 60 minutes on the gray color we can see the material that is already burned so it means that uh, we are talking about the sharing um, effect or the pyrolysis effect of the, of the in, in the material and of course the, we can take a look on the reduction of the of the area that we need to can to take into to account to verify the the load bearing capacity of the of the structure and those are the results for the specimen 2. Of course, uh, due to the fact of the specimen 2 is being protected by two layers of gypsum with 12.5 millimeters thickness each one. So we, uh, the results for after 30 minutes are not the same as uh, the previous ones. So uh, as you can see, um, uh, after 30 minutes, uh, the, 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 the wood is all of the timber structure is below 300 degrees. Okay, so this is important. So, of course, the, this is not only a thermal problem, it is also a mechanical problem and to take care of the, of the mechanical part or behavior of the material, of the wood, we need to um, highlight that uh, the material is, uh, the behavior of the material is anisotropic. Uh, because the three the three grows and the, the regiments of wood cells within the steam uh, wood can be considered locally as an autotropic material which means that we may do an approximation 
of the certain material properties in three uh, orthogonal uh, axes and um, and finally we need to to, to solve the problem um, of um, the if we, if we compare the internal forces with external forces, then they should be equal to zero. So this is the kind of solution uh, that we need to take care to find displacements and stresses in the in the, um, the material that is able to make the or to sustain the, the load. By the way, the gypsum is not considered in the mechanical simulation. Only the timber uh, is frame is considered. Regarding to the mechanical analysis, we need to use a different type of uh, finite elements. So uh, we are expecting to use solid 185, which is a height node uh, element with three degrees of freedom at each node. And this kind of element uses linear interpolating functions and full Gauss integration with linear strain. And uh, we are using also combined 39, uh, 39, which is a, uh, which is designed to work under compression and this element has two nodes and uh, the we are using these kind of elements to simulate the effect of the restraining uh, steel uh, sorry of the restraining concrete frame that uh, normally uh, is used in the testing furnaces so this is to take into consideration the gap of 25 to 50 millimeters that is expected to to be in the test frame of the of the furnace and uh, the solution method that we decided to use is an incremental and iterative with large displacements and uh, we are going to use newton raphson using an incremental displacement that can change between 0 0.001 to 1 millimeter depending on the convergence process uh, the convergence criterion is based on the force with a tolerance of 5% and a reference value of 10 power uh, minus 3. Or, well, the boundary, the boundary conditions are those that are specified by the standard for testing. So the bottom track is full, fully restrained. And on the lateral edges, we have those. Um, so the U, the, 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 this, this displacement in the direction of in, in the plane of the wall is restricted by the frame of the furnace. It means that we have those special elements combined 39 that uh, don't that do not l let go the the the, the, the studs the, the external studs uh, to touch the the frame of the wall. So they are making a compression or trying to move the studs to the internal uh, region of the wall. Um, and the upper track, of course, in the upper track, we are in, imposing the displacements on, um, on the top of the wall. And of course, uh, we need to take into consideration, or to, you need to determine the reaction of, on those nodes. So the reaction of those nodes is going, is, the reaction is going to give you the load bearing capacity of the, of the elements. So, uh, and, and we are going to do the analysis following this uh, flow chart. So first a thermal analysis over time, then we have a, a, a results file for temperatures where we can, uh, of course, uh, determine the temperature of in each node and we are going to use the fire rating so it means that we are going to analyze mechanically uh, the structure after 30 60 uh, 90 or 120 minutes so we are going to analyze the load bearing capacity for certain fire rating time so it means that the time is frozen for the mechanical analysis and we are going to increase the displacement on the top of the wall and to determine the load bearing capacity after 30, 60 minutes or uh, 90 or 120. So here we can see um, uh, the, the deformed shape modes for the specimen one after 30 and 60 minutes. As you can see, after 30 minutes, we have buckling, only buckling in the plane of the frame. Um, after 60 uh, after 60 minutes, we have also uh, not an, an, a different buckling in the out of plane 
uh, to the furnace side. So normally, or usually, uh, even for uh, light steel flames, uh, usually the, the structure goes to inside the furnace and then moves to the outside of the furnace, as we are going to see right now for the specimen number two. Here we have the, the deformed, deformed shape modes uh, of, the, of the structure. Okay. So um, we have uh, for after 30 minutes we have um, we have the buckling in the out of plane to the furnace side as I, as I, I said before. After 60 minutes we have the same behavior to 30. Uh, but remember that this time uh, for this uh, those results are obtained with a double layer protection uh, of uh, gypsum in each side. So there is a difference between the previous slide and this one. After 90 minutes, we have uh, an outside movement. Okay. And, uh, and finally, after 120 minutes, we have a mix of deformed shape modes due to the effect of the sharing layer, which is very uh, complex uh, uh, deformed shape mode due to this effect because uh, the, the, the the residual or the effective cross section is going to be changed a lot from 30 to uh, 120 minutes. Well, uh, regarding if you if you if if your plan is to make a test and it is in fact we are planning. Uh, to do some experimental tests on this kind of uh, timber frames, we need to decide which is the load level that we want to apply. And first of all, what we need to do is to be able to do, do the calculation of the load bearing capacity of each stud. And this uh, load bearing capacity is determined or should be determined uh, for t equal to zero, that's uh, the formula, the first expression that we have on the on the top. Then, um, uh, if you want to know the, the 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 load that you need to apply during the test, you should use a kind of load level. Usually, as I said, it can be a typical load level can be 0 0.6, but of course can be a different value depending on the load that you have on the, um, on the structure. So, uh, um, and depending of course of, on the on the utility of the of the of the stood in this uh, building structure. So um, that's why uh, several load levels can be uh, simulated or tested. So this is uh, those are the most important results. So um, on the pictures on the right, we have the uh, the blue curve. Uh, the blue curve is the uh, the plot of the of load bearing capacity, if you want, versus uh, the vertical displacement on the top. So it is the contraction uh, C. The, the letter C that we uh, specified on the first on the first couple of couple, couple of slides, and we are, have the, the 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 blue curve is the curve for room temperature, so it is the same for both, and the the other curves are the curves for the relation between the load bearing capacity and displacement or the contraction displacement on the top of the of the wall uh, after. Uh, 30, 60 for the specimen one, and 30, 60, 90, and 120 minutes for the specimen number two. If we assume that the load bearing capacity is determined more or less for after 2.2 millimeters of contraction uh, displacement, we uh, may do the calculation of the um, uh, residual load bearing capacity and as you can see after 30 minutes the reduction of this uh, load bearing capacity is very big uh, after that uh, after 30 minutes the reduction is not so big as you can see for specimen one the reduction is smaller 
and uh, for the specimen two, uh, the reduction um, tends to be more or less the same, but uh, after 120 minutes, we may say that the load bearing capacity is uh, in, in between 30 uh, percent or 30 percent uh, or 35 percent depends on the scale that we can take from the graph. So finally some conclusion. This research presents the load bearing capacity of timber frame walls protected with one and two layers of gypsum. Um, and of course we did the simulation at home temperature but we did also the simulation under the fire condition um, for different fire rating periods. And the fine filament model that we use for thermal analysis was, was already, has been already validated. Uh, in fact, using a 2D uh, equivalent finite element, but uh, we made the validation against uh, some experimental tests made uh, by other uh, researchers. And um, we know that the higher protection level reduces the share to share layer of the studs and increase the load bearing capacity when we made the comparison after 30 minutes between specimen one and specimen two we saw that the load bearing capacity of specimen two was higher than the, the load bearing capacity of specimen one uh, here it is so the values are 53 percent for 53.5 percent for specimen two and 47.5 for specimen one more simulations are expected to be developed on, based on different levels of protection layers using different um, composite materials. And uh, finally, some experimental tests are also required to validate the mechanical part of the model. But we are already preparing this uh, experimental campaign, as I said before. So this ends my presentation. I hope you enjoyed uh, the topic, timber frame walls under five conditions. Uh, thank you very much for watching us.